All the trends are one way, all are degenerate, and all are undeniable. Yet where are the dots joined? Where have you ever seen the dots joined? The common cause is taboo to name. Overpopulation is the stock explanation. But it blinkers out the causal mechanism altogether. Transnational corporate resource extractions, wastes, pollutions, and depletions of life-carrying capacities everywhere. It is not doubling world populations that po poison and hollow out the world. The majority poor control only a fraction of the Earth's resources. What drives the end game is exponentially multiplying money, demand, and commodities with ever more wastes. They more than double every decade or few years, but global population rates have, as the damages still escalate. That educated people can go on blinkering out the actual causal mechanism while blaming the majority poor reveals the derangement of this ruling value system. Not even prophets like Chris Hedges decode it. Journalists are trained not to. Not even moral philosophers question the system worshipped, ma masked as the free market. Freedom means no accountability to human and world life, while competition means competing to externalize all costs onto the lives of citizens and environments. The value driver behind it all is no more questioned than the Almighty. It can do no wrong. But one underlying lockstep of false equations propels this unnamed war on the world through its mutations and metastases. And this is the, the source code, as I go on to call it. Rationality equals self-maximizing choice. That's just de rigueur. People don't know uh, this outside the academy so much, but Peter certainly knows it that that's what rationality is, self-maximizing choice. You go from there and then that means always more money for the self is good. So that's the ethic. Equals self-multiplying sequences of ever more money to the top as the ruling growth system. Equals all else is disposable means to this multiplying pathogenic growth. My 15-year study, The Cancer Stage of Capitalism from Crisis to Cure, diagnoses this ruling value mechanism as cancerous in principle. It is, in short, a deregulated self-multiplication of transnational money sequences accountable to nothing but their own multiplication with no committed life functions. With the Hayek-Reagan Thatcher crusade to reverse the history of the world into a moronic free market and conservative values, the march was on. Marxists would not engage this great reversal on moral grounds because morality was believed to be only ruling class ideology. This left no life ground to stand upon. From the transnational victory of corporate world rule from 1991 on, reversals of social states were portrayed as market miracles, whatever the results for people's lives. The magic of the market was the new world religion, the end of history. The mass media were consolidated into one collective corporate organ across cities and borders. Death squads erased community oppositions in the South. The academy was and still is defunded to serve the global corporate market and commodity development. The nations of the world are all the while restructured to be subordinate functions to the supreme moral goal of transforming humanity and the world into ever more private commodities and profits. And again, I emphasize it appears to be the most anti-moral system one can imagine, but in fact it is a moral system and is defended as a moral system and uh, through the uh, notion of the free market and the self-maximizing atoms optimizing uh, consequences by an invisible hand that will necessarily turn out this way. It is a morality. It's a crazy morality, but it is one. It is an ethic, and in fact, that's where they ultimately go, what, what you see going on in Ukraine, for example, right now. They're going to the ultimate ethic, and the ultimate ethic are those series of equations I gave earlier. So society itself does not exist to this ruling value mechanism. They come right out and say it, but it's still a value mechanism. 
Its logic of growth is totalitarian and malignant to the marrow. More precisely, deregulated global corporate money sequences abolished by treaties and by wars, all barriers, whatever, to their free multiplying growth through all that exists, whatever the destruction of natural and social life support systems. My work has been to decode this globally life-invading value system. Predictably, the diagnosis is taboo to mention in the press, however confirmed by the facts and the predictions. No social or disorder ever allows its ruling program to be publicly unmasked. Thus, the malignant value code marches on. Alarm bells at the degenerate symptoms increase, but solutions only extend the system further and deeper. Life value economics is as unspeakable as the fatal disorder itself. Well, the promises are kept. There's no binding regulation to protect any life carrying capacity on earth from the loot and pollute money system in the years since. None. Many blame capitalism, but unlike classical capitalism, this mechanism is not driven by productive force development. It is driven by transnational money sequence multiplication. It's not just the, the exchange, it's the multiplication, the exponential multiplication that makes it cancer-like. With no productive standard, which despoils more means of life than it produces. Think of that. It destroys more means of life than it produces. It's clear. It eliminates the working class itself. It's not like classical capitalism. <clears throat> the ruling idea that the system is peerlessly productive is increasingly contradicted by far more life goods disappearing than are created. Something much more sinister is afoot. The social and natural life bases by which the human species evolves are reversed and overrun. Yet not even the opposition defines what ultimately counts, humanity's universal life necessities themselves. That's where we've got to start our ground. And yet you don't find such, you don't even find the concept of it had to originate the concept. The meaning of the economy itself to produce and distribute life goods otherwise in short supply through generational time, that's what a real economy is, is lost. Well, the very air humanity breathes is going more toxic and acidic. The contradiction to productive growth is unseen. As the waters of the world are simultaneously destroyed, the dots are not joined. Even as there are mass extinctions of species, youth without futures and irreversible death servitude of the world, all is well if growth is returning to the system, which causes all of them. The Earth's very soil cover taking tens of millions of years to evolve as mined, acidified, salinated, degraded and exhausted as forest and mineral covers are stripped mined from one continent to the other and there is no connected common meaning uttered among the peoples. The ruling value mechanism devours the life substance of humanity and the Earth itself but remains assumed as ever more productive in its growth, even by angry unions who call for more growth and bargain on the basis of productivity. And as I'll go on to say, productivity is just producing for this cancerous system. Well, at least someone might reply, Climate warming has been recognized by a blue ribbon economic panel, Britain's Stern Review, as the greatest and widest ranging market failure ever seen. It was very uh, gratified to see him acknowledge that because it, uh, before then we basically had the assumed infallibility. This is a step towards rational observation. <clears throat> but even with a UN panel of over 1,600 scientists on the case, there's no connection to the other basic life capacities driven towards collapse by the same organizing value mechanism. No secret is more unspoken. So more rights to pollute and profit are instituted and the climates and hydrological cycles spiral to more deadly extreme. The world's poor suffer first and most, Lord Stern also rightly observes, but this fits the reigning value mechanism. Those without money do not exist to it. I think it's ultimately a knowledge war and that we live in a knowledge, a knowledge world and knowledge is what's going to determine whether we sink or advance. Let us summarize. Behind every step of the great reversal lies failures of knowledge and value understanding. 
One, failure to diagnose the regulating value mechanism at work. Nowhere, really, down to exact principles determining its choices and decisions. Two, failure to connect across the domains of life despoliation is predictable from the system's money sequence multiplication. That's why the second edition of this book came out. It's because everything it was predicting was coming true, but it doesn't make any difference as long as people don't know it. Three, failure to define or demand any public policies against its feeding on life support system with public treasure supporting it every step. And four, failure to recognize any life value principle or the life ground of the economy itself. Number four is basically my life work is uh, uh, what is formally called life value ontoaxiology, but I, I uh, release you from having to remember that term. But what it means, literally life value, everything of value is of life value. And that means of uh, both on the ontological level, which means the logic of all being, all existence on earth. And uh, ontoaxiology means principles of value. Uh, so it, it's meant to carve out a universal, uh, unlike our, our other uh, thought uh, systems, a universal referent that applies to all values whatsoever and all domains whatsoever. <clears throat> the knowledge blackout on this and everything else is understandable once one recognizes that the vault vaunted knowledge economy has no criterion from the start. All it means is what can be controlled, sold, or manipulated to grow the ruling value mechanism. Pause on that general fact. This is why true knowledge is so often denied or attacked as uncompetitive. Look for exceptions to this spread of the ruling money value mechanisms into the very capacities of human understanding. Re really, knowledge has been the first uh, victim here at the level of the at the level of the ruling value mechanism. And right into the universities, right into the schools, right into the mass media, right into public programs, right into CBC everywhere. It's it's. It's dominating. Who even now recognizes that new efficiencies, reforms, and cost cutting are always attacks on people's lives, means of life, and life functions? Who connects across the one way falls of life standards and regulations, public science and testing, agrarian communities and lands, workers' rights and unions, social infrastructures and protections, and social life security across populations, while money demand? multiplies out of all control at the top. See, it's a predictable system. It's a cancer system. Who names the innermost ruling code driving all? Whatever protects or enables human and ecological life is eliminated as a barrier to private money sequence multiplication. This is the source code of the cancer system. It explains why transnational corporate equity and bank profits grow to ever new records as the world's majorities are dispossessed. It explains why social and natural life capacities are despoiled across continents. The war on life is built into this system. Where we might ask did the transnational money sequences not destructively invade the evolved fields of life of humanity and fellow species. Exponentially multiplying money sequences eat away at the margins of every private transaction, public funding, life exchange and substance with and across borders. On the local level, hardly a shop, a buyer, a builder, a home dweller. This was pointed out to me, by, by the way, by a Zeitgeist uh, member who's a professor of physics. He says, look at it. On the local level, try to look anywhere, any exchange, any step, a buyer, a builder, I'm putting it in a summative language, a home dweller, anybody who lives today is not invaded by the same financial mechanism with ever more rights to demand at every exchange site with no function while enforcement is paid by the public being strip, stripped by it. How else would a cancer system behave? So if you think of it, this model, it's an explanatory model, not a metaphor, how, how else would it, if it's true, or if you know you just want to test it's true, how else, if you were going to have a cancer at a social level of life organization, how else could it behave than the way it's behaving? Always one way. Always the same.